We're here at the Wildlife Conservation Film Festival. We just witnessed an amazing film called Hope, which I know gave so many of us watching it hope about what's going to happen uh, with the mountain gorillas, which has been an extremely successful program. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about it with the wonderful guests we have here from the Diane Fossey Gorilla Foundation and uh, the producer of the film Hope. And you were also photography and director on it as well, right? I was. Yeah? <laughs> he wore many hats on that film. Thank you so much. So could you introduce yourself, please? Uh, I'm Dr. Tara Stowinski. I'm President and CEO of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. My name is Pete McBride, and I was uh, the uh, co-director and cinematographer for the film and writer. Uh, my name is uh, Felix Lekishban. I'm the director of the Kaisuke Subcenter. And what he doesn't say is he is Diane Fossey's successor. I'm Claire Richardson. I'm President Emeritus of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. Good evening. I'm Veronica Vecellio, and I work with the Fossey Fund in Rwanda as man managing the gorilla program there. Can I have one more group that's not here? <laughs> <laughs> we have people yeah, missing in action. So I think yeah. what's so unique about the Diane Fossey Gorilla Foundation is it's been 47 years since Diane started it. They've made a huge impact on saving the lives of mountain gorillas and also heightening the awareness of the uh, local people and involving them with saving the mountain gorillas. This model that you have, I'm the person that asked the question about that. Why is it such a challenge, do you think, to get this kind of model followed in other parts of Africa? Well, <laughs> you know, the population and the country are unique. So the Virunga ecosystem, in the scheme of things, is relatively small. It's volcanic, so it's tough. But there is no buffer zone. As the narrator said, it's surrounded by people, densely, densely populated. So on, in the scheme of things, you would think that's probably right. But because you have a rule of law now in Rwanda, and you have government commitment, as Veronica mentioned, um, there is a partnership. There is a partnership. There is no corruption. There is a need for help. The people are still very poor. Rwanda is still very dependent on aid. But if you have a plan, and you can bring resources to bear, and you have a 47-year reputation. Right. So there is trust, there is authenticity. It, then you can take that commitment. We are one of the largest employers, so you've got economic development. Uh, we support the education of the children. We support the public health. So they don't see guerrilla researchers up here totally removed and having nothing to do with the lives of the people. They see them interacting with the lives of the people. And unless you do that, and you look a long-term view, after the genocide, nobody at the National University of Rwanda was interested in studying guerrilla conservation. They wanted to study law. They wanted to study business. They wanted to do education. But now, we have the first ever Rwandan director of the Karasoki Research Center. So unless there is a commitment to make Africans stewards of their own biodiversity, it's not going to work. We can't impose it. It has, it has to come from within, and I think that's what makes this work. Do you think it's the fact that you have had the long-term time to develop this kind of thing with people? I do. Tara can talk to the long, long, long-term database. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, we're, we're a very unique program. We're one of the longest running um, research and conservation programs in the world. And I think being there, as, as I said earlier, when we were talking, um, you know, through th thick and thin and staying and being on the ground, it definitely creates that sense of trust and authenticity that Claire mentioned. And that enables you to work with the local population and for them to know that you're going to stay, stay the course to make sure things work. It was interesting because in the film that we saw about uh, the genocide of the forest elephant and all the bush meat that's being sold, they didn't connect with World Wildlife Fund at, at all. They look at them like they're the enemy. So I think it's a credit to the Diane Fossey Gorilla Foundation that you can create this kind of relationship with people because at the end of the day that seems to be what it, that's all you have. It's true, and as Claire mentioned, you know, we em employ a lot of people in the area, and our staff come from those villages just outside the park where the gorillas live, and they end up being excellent stewards of our message within the local community. I don't know if you can... I just have one thing, please, too. Yes, I, I think um, also that this success in this remarkable program, where we have locals that are this committed and doing such a great job, promotes success. So there was a another group that wouldn't have, this film wouldn't have existed, this film Hope, if it weren't for a, a private enterprise, a group called Craghoppers out of, out of England that actually supported your group and supported this film. So it's a, just a, an example of how everyone's jumping on board when they see a, a model that's working. Well, I, and I also think this has been such an incredible evening to have all of, all of you here and for all of our audience members, things like the Wildlife Conservation Film Festival certainly are, they we're raising awareness with that and, uh, you know, the message that's in these, these films, I think, affects people everywhere because if all of us can't go out there and, and talk about what we see here, what do we have? I know, I'm very excited you said I could sign up for a trip to go see the gorillas. Yeah. Where do I sign? <laughs> you can sign right over there. Right over there. Right over there. Right over there. Okay, I'll, thanks. You right I'll be right over. Um, I just want to thank you all so much for um, being here. With everything that's going on in the world nowadays, this is just such an inspiration. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having, having us. You. How do you guys see the film festival? I mean, where do you place it in importance? Of course, it is, a, I think, a very effective mm -hmm. communication and exchange of idea place. So, I mean... Well, I agree, and I think that the power of film and the power of video is, is probably the most important thing that we have going. Still photography, wonderful pictures of infant gorillas yeah. are great. But when you see Veronica and Felix hauling up the side of the volcanoes, thank God you didn't see me hauling up the side of the volcanoes. <laughs> I get pushed up the side of the volcanoes. Um, and you see the, the gorillas living in family groups. You, you can't replace video. You can't replace film. It's the most powerful medium we have. And New York is a huge city. So the, the exposure to hundreds of thousands of people is really amazing. And I, I think also, I think it's just such a critically important time to be telling these stories. I mean, there was a report released just two weeks ago saying that in the last 40 years, we have lost 50% of our wildlife. So while we all love the hope message, unfortunately, the, the movie that played before that, that talked about what's happening in places like CAR, the Central African Republic, that's much more the truth of what's happening to wildlife. So I think being able to present both of those, what's really happening, but then that we can make a difference mm -hmm. and we can see success, it's a very important message for people to get, to know the reality, but to not lose hope that we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.